This conference will now be recorded. Alrighty, so how is everyone? Good. Awesome. Good. Another day. The other day. So, <clears throat> I, I guess we can skip the introductions. <laughs> At the moment. Chris Chris posted it today. I gotta say, I gotta give him props. I, I'm lax on that. We'll get back on it. I'm still I'm I'm still diving through this ecom system. It is so close to yelling, "Hey, everybody, start buying parts from us!" But we gotta still take it a little slow. But it's working. So, anybody got anything new or interesting or not so interesting that they want to talk about or say? I got a new toy. Or yeah, <laughs> give say Chris got a few new toys. <laughs> Talk about your oh yeah. Well, okay. I got another, I got another new toy. It's a 3D scanner. It oh, just nice. came by UPS like five minutes ago. Ah, it'll be fun. Let me know how that thing goes. Yeah, yeah. There's there's reviews. This is probably one of the better ones on a budget, but there's definitely if you've got unlimited money, much better ones out there. Cool. <laughs> Sweet. Wow. Have you tried building the the platform with the motor on it and mounting your phone on it? Have you seen you know um Thingiverse? There were all kinds of ways to make the phone spin around and catch a scan that way and all that. I imagine that can be a little hairy. Yeah, I haven't done that. You know, years ago when the Xbox Connect came out, people started modifying those things because mm -hmm. um, they've got that laser sensor in there as well. But nope, I haven't done that. Well, we'll see what this can come up with. Uh, CeeLo, the prototype's been printed for the um, alignment thing for the Aurora. Oh, really? So as soon as it gets to me, I'm just going to throw it all in a damn envelope and send it to you. Unless you can, like, make China deliver my shit in a couple of days. <laughs> I'm, I'm, working, I'm working them over, too, trying to get what I want, too. They already, uh, she's already getting frustrated with me, but that's too bad. All right. So our, our topic today is, is, <laughs> look at Tommy. He's like, as usual. <laughs> no, no, cause, cause I, I mean, I could give Chris a hard time saying, Hey, the topic should be the, uh, Aurora rotary. But, you know, I know where he stands on that one. <laughs> I, that's I, what I, thought. <laughs> I think you got an article working on that, don't you? That's almost done. I'm just I'm trying to fine tune a couple of little things so that it, it is as close to the gantry, the CO2 uh, for everybody. So I'm just fine tuning. Chris and I talked a little earlier about it. and I, I think I'm close. <laughs> Are you going to put a turntable on it and try to do something with dog tags or something or cards where you spin them around? That'd be possible with that one since it can rotate. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could. I've seen a couple people make it so that they close the jig or the uh, the um, jaws. jaws. Close the jaws and just expand them just a little bit, right? To hold the plate, a little pizza mm -hmm. pie plate. Yeah. That'd be perfect. I didn't realize it could do that. So now you got my, you got the wheels no. turning again, and yeah, like pins. You know how they do the pins in the rotary, you know, and you <clears> spin <throat> the platter. That rotary will rotate. I think will it, Chris? Make sure it'll rotate up 190 uh, degrees so that it's up, so the choke will point straight up. Does it? Does it go that yeah. far? Yeah. So you want to see the rotary thing? Yeah, but you're gonna have you'd to space have to it up over the motor. Yeah, yeah, yeah you have to put a shaft have to... on it. Just just build it on a shaft. That's all you'd have to do. Just build a turntable yeah. on a shaft. I can yeah, break that. You start getting uh, wobbly or not quite concentric as you're indexing through. Yeah. Well, okay. if you're lettering pens, it wouldn't be that critical, I don't think. You know, if you were putting names on pencils or something like that, it may not be as critical as if you're trying to center up coins or something like that. I'm, that might be a little tricky for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like Grant has some scan offsets ever since uh, somebody crashed the head on his. Ah, Grant. Um, 
Should we talk about scanning offsets for a minute? The work you've put in on that, Chris, about yeah, I, how, I how they're coming we talk out. About that before? We, I, don't I don't know if we discussed I, that before or not. I don't know mm -hmm. if we did. Okay. This um, would be neat. We, we might have gone over it just like quickly one day and then it got yeah. geared off. So Remind me to make this a short. You know how Grant wants me to pull some shorts out of here? This would be a perfect one. <laughs> all right. So uh, every you know we get all these scanning offsets and other things. So you've got to input about the machine. I actually wrote an article about this. Um, your origin of the machine, your machine dimensions, your scanning offset, disabling the start button, the exhaust fan delay for these new uh, inline fans, and then uploading the data for your machine property so you can get the preview better. So that's a that's a lot of steps. Uh, we got a lot of documentation on that, but uh, decided to write some VBA code that will generate that file for you. Uh, our, our counterparts over in China will utilize that, put in your serial number, your offsets, and generate a file that will live on the USB stick that comes attached to the honeycomb. And you can just once click import that device profile, and now you've got all those settings entered. You know, based off of it's a Nova 34, uh, 24, Nova 35, it'll bring in the right dimensions and stuff like that. So much, much easier. Um, but still want to stress if you utilize that, kind of understand what it's doing for you. So if you want to make changes, you still can. So the whole article goes over that information. But that's really it's, uh, yeah. for the Novas and Odins right now, not for the Auroras. So that's as plug as pl plug and play as we can make it. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's a Another neat thing. Another profile for USB, or if you want to do Ethernet, it'll set up the default IP address and all that jazz. So hopefully, help skip a few steps. Mm -hmm. I, I pulled a Brian. I'm I'm Brian Jr. and uh, I told Grant to <laughs> to create a ticket, and he did. Nice. Good. Let's let's wear him out on it. <laughs> show show him how good we are. Just so y'all know, we did that demo yesterday uh, for hopefully they'll they'll order something. Uh, of course, Chris saved our rear ends once again because uh, they brought in the pavers, brick, red brick pavers to try. We had the glass and the brass and stuff like that already figured. But yeah, thanks again, Chris. I appreciate it. <laughs> you got it. Of course. Anytime. Hey, Brian. Brian, you, you got some feet. Yes. You in a spaceship? Space invaders? It does, sound, it does sound like a little wobbly. <laughs> Jetsons. Jetsons. Yeah. <laughs> Is it still bad? Yeah. And your voice sounds like you're getting over a cold. That one's not cold. Uh, what about that? Is that better? Mm, the hum's still I, there, but it's much, much lower. I do have a cold. I mean, my there's okay. something. I'm losing my voice or something, so I don't sound normal anyway. And I'm on that large diaphragm mic, so that probably intensifies it. Yeah, I think it picks up a whole, whole bunch of stuff, which is awesome. Mm. Oh, sorry, there I was looking go. at the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I forgot we're we're on air. I forgot. So actually, Tommy, that that brings up a good point. You didn't even realize, and we could probably discuss that as well. The offset fill, uh, using that on a brick to create a a basically a higher power level, uh, to to get that. Um, the clay inside to glass, right? Um, yeah, we we don't use offset fill. We've never even looked at it, read about it, thought about it, because when and after seeing what it does, I don't know that there's ever a reason to really use it on wood. There is no. I, I mean, you can you, you can drill holes with it. Okay, good point. Or if you're doing like a uh, a border frame, where it's like a one inch border frame around, you don't want to do the uprights all the way across and over. 
to okay, good either point. modify your artwork, but you still have all that you know back and forth um, extend space. But if you do the offset fill, it does you know just a square racetrack. Um, but it's also handy that same technique that you're talking about for engraving on the brick. If you do uh, those coatings like Surmark Brilliance or Laser Bond on aluminums and coppers, you know things that can um, dissipate heat fast, that can help get that um, adhesion on those materials. Yeah, we um, we did uh, testing on with the Laser Mark on aluminum and silver plated copper, just to, to kind of see before those. Uh, yeah, you know, that demo. Because they were bringing uh, brass. Um, nice. Well, your fiber will uh, do a real nice brass mark. Well, and mm. that's what got me looking and thinking about the rotary with the fiber is because we do a lot of work with uh, the insulation. We'll be able to take casings and mm -hmm. then engrave on them, whether it's uh, you know, a, a, a burial flag or what have you. Yeah, I did some uh, shell casings. That, that Brian? Yeah. What? <laughs> what? Not Brian? No, I think Your it's you, background Brian. noise. But I did some yeah, shell casings. That mic is insane, which is awesome. It worked really well by doing the text, but then I'd rotate the, the casing to get you know, more wrap around it. But that was a very manual process. I was only doing like a 10 of them, so it worked out fine. So, Tommy, oddly enough, with the standard engraving, you weren't able to get the glassing of the brick. No, and we had it at, what, 150 millimeters a second and 100% power? Yeah. On the, yeah. On the so, 80 watt? So that, that line just treats it so differently and you're able to get that glass look which is nice oh and they were and they, they were happy were, they were very pleased wow. that it could do that um Good. they were fixing to head home and i think it was a four and a half or five hour drive for them Ooh. to get home um they came from upper indiana Ooh. um when you're over so, an ap you're over an ap you're done uh, <laughs> the, I mean, the, the fact that we also had, you know, a couple pieces of granite, we've never, we've had those for a few months and never tried anything. So she threw them in, in the 80 watt and run a, just a quick test card on them to kind of see, because right. uh, we'd never done it. Uh, it's, granite's not something that, you know, we do or had done in the past, but now we have the ability. <laughs> yeah, granite is very, very picky to heat. It will freckle quickly. Yeah, we, she wasn't very happy with the test card. Um, some of it looked pretty good. Some of it was, you're right, horrible. So I see a new name up here, uh, Robert. If you wanted to introduce yourself or say hello, feel free to do it. You're, you're your mic is off, so you'll have to click your mic in the bottom. But you're welcome to join in and ask whatever you want to ask. Yeah, I had to find that. A little different than Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my name's Robert B. Craft. Um, I'm new to the laser community. I got uh, my 51100 there back in January, or the end of January, the end of February. So uh, been learning how to do that. Uh, Kind of, kind of interesting. One of one of the things that that I used or that I that I have done in the past is I used a program called uh, POV ray tracing. It's a three dimensional thing where you write code to build pictures. And some of the parts and pieces that I used to do for that uh, play really well in building the cutout parts on this new laser. So I'm I'm enjoying the heck out of that because. Nice. Stuff I can see in my head, I can now build the parts and actually build build things. Um, so look forward to pictures of things like automatons and, and that sort of thing for me. But I'm having a good time. Cool. And have you taken uh, your your one hour training yet? Have you done that? 
I have not done that yet. I haven't figured out quite what to put on it. I may, I may, uh, you know, defer that to the wife and get her confidence up because she's also done a little bit on it, but not too much. So it may, might be useful to have her spend that hour and, and get, like I say, a little bit more confident <laughs> with it and, and her abilities and, and whatnot in doing her own jobs instead of having to defer to me to do the jobs. Yeah. I mean, we, we go through, uh, I, I don't know about the other guys, but I can speak to what I, I do with my trainings and, definitely go through a lot of light burn and a lot of its features and and kind of hidden things that people don't even think about that they could take advantage of so it'll definitely help probably both of you a little bit yeah i mean her, her for i would sure. not sit in on that but yeah definitely get her up, <laughs> up to speed um you know i i come from 10 years now cnc and that was my first tool that i bought for our craft business so i've been doing a lot of three-dimensional stuff on that that is, you know, a skill set that, that kind of ports over fairly, pretty easily. But she was never able to do any of the work on the CNC. I always had to do that work. But the laser and with the number of ladies I see doing work on laser, it's like there's no reason she can't do that. So definitely want to get her involved. Are you using Vetrix or V-Carve? V-Carve on the CNC, yeah. And then Lightburn okay. on the on the new new machine. Yeah. Um, so I also use VCarve or Vetrix, and and I you know there's there's a lot of people that come over from woodworking, and I try to relate some of this stuff with uh, speeds and feeds and and you know the layers and and all of that stuff. So we try to relate it so it's something that you're you're used to at least. Yeah, I, I'll say the test card was was the important learning for me along the way here. And Brian, you, you sent me that to get that. And I put that on that crap wood I got from Home Depot. And <laughs> it basically just burned a hole in it. And I'm like, well, let's try and get the good stuff. Somehow, the first piece of wood I bought was the right piece to get. And it was <laughs> cutting exactly the way it was supposed to. It wasn't burning it. And then the second piece I went in there, it was <clears throat> went back piece Uh-oh. Yeah, Lauren, the audio. You know, uh-oh. Did I lose my arm? Yeah, you came back. It was quick. Right. Something something with my I think with my cell service here. Anyway, the the you know, get get the good wood. Um I've since learned you know, Yeah, bounce back out. Uh, while we're catching him back up, do I still have lots of noise, or is it better? No, I haven't heard you. Okay, well, I've had it muted. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure I'm muting when I'm not tossing word salad. Not, I don't hear it in now. I don't hear the humming. Okay. Looks like we got a couple other new people. Yeah, yeah, you guys feel great. free to just jump in and introduce yourself if you like. If you have a question, you just interrupt us or we'll go off on a tangent. Or at least I can speak for myself and say that's going to happen. So. <laughs> Specifically, I guess, Dickie. I'm guessing Rich and Mike are some of our regulars as well. But what about you, Dickie? So Jason, anything new in the uh, rotary world? Uh, we got a few things brewing. We got the uh, the new heel wheel available for all the the past and present rotaries. Um, and then we have the a stand that should start shipping probably mid to late April for those that are already pre-ordered. Um, and then so, the rest will kind of. So explain the difference with that one. This is a clearance issue, right? Trying to avoid yeah. any head strikes and. Yeah, the, the one of the things a lot of people have been concerned about. I mean, pretty much since the start of of this type of rotary, has been clearance issues, head strikes, um, 
kind of being in the way and, and whatnot. So we came up with the Ascend, which is essentially the same function as the, the Junior. It's just now that it doesn't have any um, tower sticking up, no obstructions. So if you can clear a cup, you can clear the rotary kind of thing. So that kind of eliminates that. Plus, um, with the Odins, uh, with the shallower heads, uh, right now for those you have to to turn the the rotary 180, um, so the towers on facing you instead of away from you, uh, to prevent the rail or gantry or the head from from striking anything. So pretty much it'll get rid of all all that worry and concern. Also, you know, it has the integrated already. It has the, the heel wheel assembly. You can take both the heel wheel and the clamp assembly off and you can have a, a complete pass through. So you can basically lay, lay a cylinder or baseball bat or whatever clear across the whole rotary and you don't have to worry about it hitting anything. Um, and plus with a, with a lot larger objects that may have to extend past the wheels, um, you weren't or not as easily able to do it with a tower because obviously the tower is off to the side, whereas this one, there's nothing there. So you can go pretty much as, as big around as your machine will handle, your laser will handle. Um, so that's pretty much the, the key points with with that Ascend rotary that's coming out. One, one thing I do like about the Rotoboss, even with the upright, is the way you put it typically in a machine since the upright is to the right and our origin is to the top left, most of the time the motion back to home and then to the origin, it, it gets a little scary, a little hairy, but it most of the time clears it where if the tower was on the left-hand side with the origin on the left, I would say the chances of a crash are a little more likely than with it being on yeah, the Yeah, the, right. the rotor boss is the biggest concern with that because obviously it's got the dual towers. Double. Um, but to eliminate that that concern with that, you, all you have to do is spin the rotary 180, and then on the motor, the dip switches, you just flip the number five dip switch to the opposite position that it's in normally, and then instead of rotating your object 270 to, 270 to the left, you just rotate it 90 and it goes to the right, and then it'll engra it'll engrave. You know, no mirroring, no flipping, no nothing, just regular engraving. So, you know, if there's people out there that have had close calls or are concerned with it, that would be the solution to that to prevent the head from, or the gantry or the head from actually striking the towers. Yep. But yeah, other than that, that's pretty much it. We got we got a gripping, or not a grip, but a, um, the talon, the chuck that's that's in work as well um that should be sometime later this year probably towards the end of the year um but that's that's pretty much it and we're gonna see you at vegas huh oh yeah we'll be in vegas nice all all week long so <laughs> if anybody wants to come out and say hi <laughs> now what about uh anything on the horizon for the fiber there's been interest uh, in that. Yeah, I have a couple things. I'm I'm collaborating with with a couple people on a couple other uh, items. One of them is for the fiber. Um, right now, what I have is uh, a leveling jig for for the fibers. It bolts to the bed, and then it has um, adjustable plates, so you can set your your height. Like if you're using uh, cups or something and you don't need a rotary for something if it's small enough or it's elongated along the, the length of the cup you can just set it in there and just pop them in and just hit go i'm talking about like a um i'll call it a horizontal table rotary there's you probably missed it at yeah. the start of this webinar we were talking about attaching a attachment to the existing chuck rotary but if there's one that's actually made for it that will just plug yeah, and play. That's, That'd be cool. Yeah, the the one that that Chuck would grip onto, um, it, it, it's it's the same kind of concept, except the one the one we're working with is 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 an intentional machine. 
four fibers um, with an adjustable bed. So you don't, you just bolt the frame down and then you can move your head side to side and put it in position where you need it. Um, right now, it's basically being designed around like an open system. Um, but for like yeah. the Aurora and stuff, you know, it would just, you could just get it outfitted with a smaller table um, oh. to fit inside the enclosure. And not really inside the enclosure. It could stick out because, I mean, realistically, the laser head's at the center of the table, so you could have the, the rotary sticking out. Um, but that would just take, you know, a little extra. It'd be cool to, to have one platter with some indexing pins in it, and then you have a jig for pins, and you have a jig for dog tags, and you have a jig for tumblers, and you just put the Plus, appropriate attachment on there, and then it just does it, you know? Is that that's kinda... what we're working towards. It's got a, it's got basically a pegboard, like mm -hmm. kind of like the bed of the fiber. It's got holes, several holes in different places and stuff, um, to be able to to make make jigs yourself or buy pre-made jigs or or whatever. And it's got the standard hole pattern, just like the the fiber table. So um, all your standard, like if you have any spacers or or those like straight line jigs that you can put in like a 90 degree shape or whatever, those will still work on that as well. But uh, we're just ironing out the, ironing out the, the, the details as far as how it, how it operates. And cause I mean, with any of those, when you put that kind of weight, even with the regular chucks, you're, you're having a wobble issue as it transitions. So trying to work out the bugs on that, finding the best, best kind of settings and everything to, to eliminate that is kind of what we're working on now. Um, but it won't, it won't be released until we work everything out. Cause we don't want to obviously deal with, <laughs> deal with troubleshooting and stuff when people have them in hand. So we'll have them figured out before they're released. Am I still there? Brian, yeah. You're muted. I, okay, I finally figured that out. I, I keep muting because I don't want to <laughs> give you feedback. Um, hey, uh, Myers, real quick. don't To do the bi-directional and see a, a positive result, don't you have to have the scanning offsets turned off or disabled? Otherwise, it's still going to apply them. And with bi-directional, uh, you turn them off. That's what, yeah. at least that's what I think uh, Oz said, is to if turn you, off scanning you, offsets to do it. Otherwise, you'll still be fuzzy. No, if, if you're they're off, off. directional, then it's just going one direction. Everything shifts that direction. Right, which means you don't use scanning offsets at all because the scanning offsets right. are just the difference between the differences. So if you, what I'm saying is, is he'll get a, a more positive result by turning off scanning offsets, disabling them to run the bidirectional test. He may he may be ah. seeing that offset even with bidirectional turned off because it's still applying an offset. See what I mean? I've I've, ex, I've experienced with those is with the bidirectional on, the faster you go, the more likely you are to get that those anomalies like that. Um, so I mean, it can be done bidirectional. It's just you have to slow it down. Otherwise, it's it's kind of like if if you didn't have them on for the laser and you're running at a thousand, you're going to get that kind of wispy edges and kind of broken edges. Yes. But I found if you slow it down, you can still do bi-directional without turning your scan offset off. Um, but obviously, you know, time is money, and you want to kind of go as quick as you can. Yeah. But, uh, he's, just try he's trying very hard not to run his scan offsets. He needs to since he did have a, a head strike, so he needs to run a scan offset well, again. Um. All right. Well, does anybody else have anything? George, I saw you jumped on. If you've got something, let us know. Robert, if you got anything else um, or anybody, just feel free to jump in. <clears throat> and D Dickie's back. Dickie, you got anything? You're you're new to the group.
Tommy, what's the uh, the date of arrival for yours? You're you're muted. You're still muted. No shit. <laughs> there you go. Wow. Okay, so <laughs> I'm having the same technical issues as Brian today. Um, <laughs> Can't remember to hit the damn mute button. Um, middle to end of next month is what um, Grant told us when we ordered it. Uh, I figure we'll get an email when it hits port. Well, and... usually we get the before we got the email when it was on the ocean. I don't know. Y'all tell me when it's gonna get here. I'm trying to patiently await. You ordered the 50 watt non pro. Yep. Yeah. And, and, yeah. uh, George, yes, there is a 50 watt non pro fiber that does run light burn because that's the one that we ordered. So it will be here when it gets here sometime next month. So if you happen to be swinging by, then you can see it. <laughs> So did that answer your question, Chris? Because that's that's about all we know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, the the, the funny thing is, is that the the pros and non pros. Uh, that was kind of your 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 Thunder America team, kind of putting their foot down and saying, "Hey, we want we want this." So, being Thunder Global and and having access to Thunder China is a huge benefit with going with Thunder. You know, I, I kind of know some of the other companies that are out there don't don't really communicate or don't have the influence <laughs> with with their manufacturing partners. Uh, we do, and and we wanted something that, that our customers wanted, uh, a fiber that was powerful enough to run, well, a, a higher wattage fiber that could also be compatible with with light burn and we were able to get that done. So uh, it speaks volumes of, of our communication with Thunder Global, which is nice. But yeah, you're gonna be super happy with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> be I'm, I'm, be I'm patient. I'm, I'm patiently awaiting. Um, Just carry the I'm, lens around with you and look at it all day long just look at it it's, set it it's wherever on, you're at it's, it's on a place it's in its place of honor in, in the shop on display <laughs> so i can look at it every day um <laughs> thanks <laughs> oh, they, they've, they they've made a shrine <laughs> somebody, somebody's making uh hey don't forget to take the lens cover off um lanyard oh lanyard. yeah yeah Get so we went lanyards. ahead and yeah, we went ahead and ordered those just because that is something I would do is forget to take that off. But also You'd be with amazed. Being, no, you wouldn't. But, you know, <laughs> also with the fiber being here, I mean, and we're, you know, granted, we're not far away from two of y'all. Um, but, you know, people coming, you know, so far we've done, what, three or four demos? So four, that's, four demos. you know, one more thing for, for somebody to look at if they're interested. <laughs> once we become proficient in it. Yeah, and, and that? that, I mean, I, I think, I think that'll be fairly easy. I mean, I'll get both of you guys on and, and we'll go through it all. And Oh yeah, I'm not worried about it because she's the one that's got to learn it. I don't. <laughs> of course you're not worried about it. Poor Lois. Lois, when I meet you, I'm going to give you a nice big hug. Yay. <laughs> and Chris Myers, you, yep. you heard oh, her, Myers. you read her comment the other day with, she don't really care where the Bamboo Labs printer's going. It's not going in her shop. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the 3D printers don't belong in my bubble, so it's okay. Uh, look, there they are. 
Yeah, I see them. Pretty cool. They're fast. They're fast. I was going to say, you you got that one, and then you're like, okay, I love it. And you got in the second one quickly. Yeah. Is, that a bigger, is the second one a bigger one? No, they're all the same size. They're all small. That looks a little larger. No, it's probably just the angle of the yeah. laptop. No, they're fast. Like, But in order to uh, admire and enjoy this printer, you really need to have started with a Ender 3 budget type printer, you know, something that was raggedy and needed a lot of work to understand <laughs> how nice it is when a printer still, it still has issues, right? It still has problems. It's a mechanical thing, just like everything in the world. There's going to be some issues, but man, the amount of stuff that it takes care of for you and the smarts behind it and the ease of use. So, spoiled. oh, before I forget, we'll have the video. Um, I've still got, I've still got to do the eighty watt. Uh, so we'll have the video out of wiring in the uh, the switches. LED uh, yeah, push button. button. I can but, turn my lights off now inside of my <laughs> machine. <laughs> yeah. We figured if if China wasn't going to do it, we would do it. So. Yeah. It's definitely handy on the Aurora. You'll, you'll, there's a switch on the left-hand side of your Aurora. Just look for it. It's the same si uh, style as the power switch. That'll turn your lights off in the Aurora. Because when you're framing on black, dark, blues, you know those type objects, or even red, you just can't see it. So I turn the light off. You scope it out. You line it up. Turn the light on and hit the start button. So it'll definitely handy there. You hear me now? It's something they need to to add to the yes. uh, the novice for sure. Brian sounds like a professional secretary up there typing that fast. Uh, he's only angry typing. <laughs> exactly. I always angry type. <laughs> it's the only way I know how. And not a single shift button was used this day. Nope. <laughs> You're you lucky if you get a period. <laughs> And then, uh, Jim. It's funny watching the angry craftsman try and be patient and wait for a new laser. <laughs> ah, patience is not a virtue with me. Too many years in the army, I have zero patience. I could get you so a I, uh, fifty watt pro today. If you could have thrown the other motherboard in there for, <laughs> we we would have come and visited you again. No, nope, there you go. Good. <laughs> yeah yeah the problem is the easy cad three to two conversion is not just the board so be nice and if it was, was. yeah i'll just have to come out with a uv laser we will look into that one as well i'm starting to investigate uvs a whole lot more they're cool uvs are awesome uh, especially if you're doing pl plastics and glass Research slowly because you never know. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, I, I thought of another question, guys, that uh, kind of freaks me out, you know, reading reading uh, the forms and everything around cleaning your lenses. Is, is there some guidance that you can provide around what, what types of material and how often you need to do that, you know, with like an absolute don't, don't. <clears throat> don't burn a lot of this material, uh, you know, without cleaning your lens versus other things where you can, you know, not, not be quite as worried about those lenses dirtying up and whatnot. Well, it'll vary according to how much smoke you create. And that depends on the material and a lot of other settings. It'll depend on how you have your air assist. That's one of okay. the most critical functions is the air assist. The two primary functions of it are to mitigate flames and flare up and to protect the lens. So the idea is to have positive pressure on the inside of that nozzle uh, regardless. Okay. Uh, and as long as you do that, that'll help. Now, that doesn't mean you can't clean them. You know, that doesn't mean the air will do the whole job. Um, the frequency will depend on the duty cycle of your machine, how often you run it, what you're running, how your exhaust is, a lot of variables. Um, it's better to check it too often, and then you kind of <clears throat> can feel over time, oh, you know, I've run this stuff every week, and I think I'm checking it. You know, you'll be able to kind of develop. We've got some guidelines in the preventative maintenance uh, checklist as well. 
Um, yeah. I check mine every time I turn on the laser because I forget what I run last time because I run it so seldom. So that's the first thing I do is yank the lens out and make sure it's not dirty before I run it because I leave it sitting for long periods. Um, okay. So if you and, pull the laser out or the lens out and it doesn't look like it needs to be clean, you don't clean it then? Well, no. uh, the, kind of kind of true, but not really, because if you think about it, the laser beam is invisible. You can't see it. So things that we can't see could affect the beam or impede it or occlude it. So okay. it, uh, just a, if just yanking it out of there and just looking down the end to go looks good to me and putting it back in there, I would not do that too many times in a row. I would take okay. the time to swab it and actually inspect the lens from time to time to make sure. And yeah, like I say. <laughs> that is the right answer, the official answer. Well, that so, uh, so you does, know, it's a so new does thing, that look good? Get used to that, and how how often you do it, and when you yank it out, all right, go ahead and clean it. You know, so that's that's just a okay. best practices. That's good to know. Uh, so does that like look said, good? Is, is is that does that look good? Does that look clean? I don't know about that. <laughs> that yeah. yeah, this is recorded. We should not give a comment. <laughs> it, it is not it, it is not it, it, it is definitely, it looks occluded right it definitely is hazy look at that oh that's hazy. so yeah so, turned oh, it to the right angle yeah so the haze my, like you couldn't tell right you couldn't tell looking I always, through i always open it before i look at it i don't look down the tube and hope that i'm going to actually see something looking no, down the tube. but i mean okay if you if you do open it and you look into a light if it's hazy the haze is a is a light coating of soot, right? And that will automatically create heat. And the next thing that heat creates is a hole in your lens. Yep. Okay. So the black dot of death. So, yes. <laughs> like I said, I've been reading so, the forms. There's lots of black black dot of death, and I just don't yeah. want to encounter that fun anytime soon. So yeah. Yeah. So you can easily that. see that this one has yeah. haze on it and that would quickly become a nightmare just that you can little, easily, little tiny bit you right. can easily see that a thunder laser technician has a dirty lens <laughs> <laughs> i can't talk because all of mine are probably dirty <laughs> oh my <laughs> you, figure, you figure she runs i mean that that one job where we were cutting that um quarter inch hdpe and it was eight hours of cutting total and mm -hmm. the, we never touched the lens once. Yeah. Never had a now, situation. There's, um, there are some materials that are more susceptible to causing lens damage just by the nature of the way you have to run them. Like acrylics, you, it's a fine line between getting enough air to keep you from burning up your lens or your acrylic and, and, and being able to get a nice flame polished edge. Uh, if you put on the six millimeter nozzle, for instance, the nozzle that's in the toolbox with the wide orifice, you introduce another problem there because that six millimeter orifice is going to put out more air than that four millimeter inside diameter airline can supply. Is it four millimeter inside? No. Yeah, it is four and a half. Six o yeah. yeah. Six OD. On it. Yeah. So in that instance, you would need to run more air. I, I'm not sure how the Venturi effect would play there when you're running that much air uh, or how right. tight our, our heads are because there, we don't have an O ring between our lens. Um, but, uh, you wouldn't run increased air with one of those. So there, there are some caveats depending on what you're running, what heads you're using, that kind of thing uh, that can affect it as well. Okay. What, what materials are the dirtiest that you guys are aware of? That's a loaded well, question. yeah, it kind of is because you could generate a lot of soot and a lot of smoke. And if you have your air set correctly, you're going to protect in much the same way as you would if you were doing stone where you're not really creating any smoke, there's just some dust. Uh, so it's really a matter of if it gets on the lens or not and how you set your air can apply to that, but you set your air to different, different ways for different processes also. And that's when it could come in the rub. A lot of people burn up a lens doing acrylic, or I say a lot that I see it a lot uh, when doing acrylic because you have to crank the air down so low to get a nice, cut that you can see through and sometimes you go a little low and then some smoke gets in the lens and then you're done so uh, okay also if you do pulsing you know, there's no air when you pulse right you're like back that can also like mdf and stuff splatter back and cause problems 
Yeah, that's right. Manual pulsing doesn't turn on the uh, air. Yeah. So also some things that can affect it. If you are, even if you have the best connection scenario, depending on your computer, like for instance, Mac, we recommend having an ethernet connection. Uh, but if you use start button in Lightburn, that can invert your air assist. So let's say you're going to cut some half inch ply and you have your high air set and it goes to cut and you hit the start button instead of send, it might turn the low air on and you may have had it turned down to cut acrylic. You're going to catch your board on fire and smoke up a lens and you had it all set up correctly, except for that one little anomaly. So there's uh, rabbit holes like that to jump down to. <laughs> so far, all I do is send jobs to, and then I go out and, activate yeah. them on the send or shift plus send or, or our recommendations across the board to eliminate any anomalies through that serial communication when it's streaming the job to the machine they have the okay. added benefit when you send also because the entire file goes into the controller's resident memory into the laser if you have a power outage if you somebody hits a transformer or lightning strike something most times when the machine comes back on, it'll automatically pick up where it left off. If you had used the start button, that would never be able to happen. Interesting. Okay. Yep. It's kind of funny. Some of the things I'm doing intuitively seems like I picked the right right way to do them. So. Yeah. Well, having a CNC background yeah. really helps. I've noticed on my trainings that we can accelerate those quite a bit usually because you already have a good grasp of the Cartesian coordinate system. And, you know, we just need to cover basically the usual suspects and you can drive that thing like you stole it. So. Yeah. Like I said, I'm enjoying the heck out of the parts and pieces I've been putting on there. So I'm just time is my enemy right now. I'm sure you guys know that. <laughs> right. It just isn't enough time in in between still still working you know full time and then all the other activities that have to be on you know danny and i don't have to work (laughs) (laughs) i'm looking forward to that 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 retired state you know then i can devote all the time i want into that i recommend it highly yeah (laughs) (laughs) Have you guys noticed that uh, glass on a CO2 isn't – once you've had somebody do something on a on a UV that glass on a CO2, you're kind of just like, hmm. I've never seen it in person, but even the pictures, the difference is night and day. I mean, it Are looks you? almost like the sandblasting to me. Does it is it, a, is it a subtractive process with the UV? Is it removing the material? It's actually ablating it, isn't it? Because on CO2, it, you're not you're not really. It can, depending on your power and your frequencies and stuff, it'll actually dig into it. Yeah. But for the most part, you, you use the UV as like a, a superficial engraving. So you're basically um, either annealing the surface or just lightly scuffing the surface. Like in glass, I mean, when you when you're done with glass... You don't have the impurities or the fractures. It's it's silky smooth, and a lot of times, if if you do it right, I mean, you can't hardly even feel there's anything there. Yeah. Um, cause it's Which just, is as it should be. Yeah. Yeah. It's just night night and day difference. Now, I will say, like the Odin 32, I can get a pretty similar um, result out of the Odin 32 by increase. Great reading of large. <laughs> extra large, extra oh, large. That third, <laughs> yeah. that and I want to, I want to pay <laughs> for the ten cars behind me. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, jumbo fries, <laughs> onion <laughs> rings, it works. With the Odin, with the Odin 32, with with the dot size as small as as it is, they run that at about 0. 0.04, 0. 0.03 sometimes. And yeah. with the speed and every with the speed and everything and it's low because they can get a really low power, yeah. you can get a pretty close um, comparison between UV and CO2 with that. Um, yeah. That RF2 still, is a big a big denominator it, there. Yeah, it still fractures a little bit, but with the line inter- interval being so small and the beam being so small, it's I mean it's not as bad as as the regular CO2. George, well, what's uh, for dinner? <laughs> what's for dinner? Popeyes. We're coming over. Popeyes. Nice. <laughs> hey, there's George. Diggy. 
Hey, I think I finally got it up. Nice. Well, you want to? I just been introduced. Listening. So, say anything, Diggy? Sorry. Uh, no, I just uh, hadn't been to uh, one of the groups for a while and thought I'd join in today and seen, um, just trying to get on this new go to. Nice. <laughs> so, Welcome. yeah, it is a little different for sure. So, George, this is on the CO2 normal engraving, but with a focused into. So, you're about one to two millimeters from the surface. This is no cleaning, no anything. You do feel it, but there's no micro fracturing where it would like catch your finger. It doesn't happen when you focus into the material and I don't, it, it doesn't work focused away. It doesn't work focused correctly, only into the material. And I don't know why I'm not quite sure. Maybe Brian would know better than I would with the optics, but. I think it, it has to nice do with the intensity it. you're, you're, you're getting that. You're, what's the word I'm looking for, Chris? You're only hitting small piece. I mean, the not precision, not accuracy. Uh, you would, but you would think that like, if yeah. you're taking, if you're taking the lens, right, this is your lens and you have your focal point here, you would think that here would be the same as here, right? You would think that that would be the same, but it's not. I've tried focusing away at the same distance and it won't affect it the same way as if you focus into the material i don't know why but it's more concentrated that's the word i was looking for and, and it's what, under the surface 19 picture frames yesterday 19 glass picture frames during the demo um and they we focused it at two millimeters I think you had to up the power a little bit from what I ended up at. I started at 40 and ended up at 65 power. Yeah. So, so the caveat is I do run higher power, especially if it's a thicker glass, right? So you can, and it was thick, you know, that, yeah. that, right. So thicker glass, you can run a higher power and I run a tighter interval. Like I'm overlapping. I'm making sure that I'm overlapping that interval, but uh, uh, Tommy and Lois can can attest that it, it, it actually does work for whatever reason. I'm going to have to update my workflow because I've always recommended defocusing, which technically you're still doing, but you're just focusing in instead of out. Opposite. So, right. and, yeah. and I tried it that way, Brian, so many times thinking that, okay, I'm widening the beam and it's not going yeah. to be as harsh, you know, mm -hmm. on the material. And not well, maybe that's the whole that. problem. Yeah, maybe the whole problem is you need it to be concentrated to a smaller area, not a bigger one. So what you're doing makes a lot more sense. And you're doing it subsurface so that the micro fractures don't reveal themselves and start spalling. So right. this is, I agree this with is the, Yeah. Literally no cleaning, no no micro fracturing. It is no a brush. Texture, yes. <laughs> no brush, no nothing. Like like I would typically, you know, I made that whole video about taking the wire wheel to it to clean it off. I didn't have to do it to this. Mm -hmm. And that's it's what perfect. They, it is perfect. The, the people that came yesterday, they are so used to on the that AP laser that they had is having to go back in with like white paint well, to, to fill it or something to, to fill, fill it. It, it was a big to make process it look frosty. before they even got to the white paint. So they did um, the steel wool. And then they would sit and have to pick out the pick out flakes with an exacto knife, they said, and then go back and paint fill everything. And yesterday when we were done running them, they were pretty tickled. They that... were really pretty pleased. Now there was some weird things on some of the commas or quotation marks or maybe the end of a Y. There was some weird stuff. Um, but I think a lot of that was the glass. Um, yeah. And obviously if we'd it... have had time to do proper testing and not just hey while we're here can you run 19 frames <laughs> right did they have an order they needed to finish up or something yeah no, <laughs> <it>. <laughs> and, uh, and so that's cool this is, this is the second demo that we have helped somebody um finish an order <laughs> fulfill an order yeah. because they're well being done. I have some documentation from the old uh, uh demo days um that mm -hmm. says that let the 
the demo will consist of the uh, operator running things that they're familiar with and not just bringing stuff and dropping it in your lap. If you want some of that documentation, I can give it this, to you. This but, was full on experimenting. So the, yeah. everybody, the other lady brought enough of the, uh, the acrylic, the two colored acrylic, the two tone yeah. acrylic. It was super thin and, and 3M yeah. backed, um, that I could run a test card on it. Yeah. And then I even asked her, I was like, can I keep this but, test card? Because this isn't the machine that you're getting. You're getting 100 watts. And she's like, yeah, keep it. So well, now I have. The, she got well, the 63. She's the one that came down to Chris. Oh, no. We were doing it all on the, the 80, 80 watt. watt machine, though. Yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. yeah, whatever she picked up from you, Chris Myers. Mm -hmm. um, well, you guys garner some experience um, off of running all that stuff for people anyway, though. So, I mean, it's a win-win yeah. win all the way around. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so put in those, uh, the, the brass. Um, spent rounds um that they had marked with ceramark and it wasn't coming out great and then um we hit it with laser bond yeah then we hit one with laser bond and it came out much better so obviously i would laser bond <laughs> i would make some changes um if it was something that i was doing regularly um and then we threw that brick in there um to try and get the settings down on that brick which was kind of cool because i had always i've never even seen one so I don't really mind people bringing stuff like that for, for us to experiment mm -hmm. with. And if, if they want to be here for five hours while we do all this weird stuff, then come on. We yeah. set aside the entire day when we know someone's coming for a demo. We just That's know cool. that the whole day is shot for our normal stuff. Mm -hmm. And these are, these are interesting. The bricks that they sell, I think it's Laser Sketch. It has a special additive in it. And yeah. as you heat it up, it's supposed to glass, right? I can't get it there's, glass. You get it laser. dark, but not black. No, no, you can, <laughs> yeah, you can get it, you can get it to glass. Uh, yeah. It's just yeah. going to be yeah. settings. Going slow with a be. lot of power. Yeah. Um, no, we, it we wasn't. I do that wrong. I do, we I do bricks wrong. on my fiber. The the going slow, the dwell is where it's at though. You need to keep that heat there concentrated enough to where it actually can heat yep. it up and do it. We were at like twenty five. Like, I did I did I did a bunch of red uh clay bricks for a school. We're doing like a paved walkway with donations and stuff. And uh I've done them on the CO two and the fiber. The fiber does it better in my opinion, but um it turns it like a like a onyx black kind of glass looking. Mm -hmm. Um and you can do it both with the CO2 or the fiber. I mean, fi like I said, the fiber, I think, is a little bit more efficient at it. But um, with the CO2, it's definitely possible. you got to go really slow and pretty hot. And probably actually, more than one pass in some cases. Actually, we had we were using the 80 watt with 20% power, the offset, offset fill. Fit. Yeah. Totally and then... I don't remember the speed, but I don't think it was that damn slow. And it was turning out, they were happy as could be with it. Well, I mean by slow, I don't mean like 20 or 30. No, you're talking about 250, 350, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, somewhere between, I think I think I run mine at about 150 to 200 and about okay. 65 to 70% power. Um, oh, good. We, and we it, had it, and it at the twenty percent power on the eighty watt, and it was doing just fine. Was it black in it? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like glass, glass black, or yes. just like a dull powdery black. It no. was, it was giving them the result that they wanted. So no. we had it shiny. <laughs> we had it. No, and it was all about what they wanted. Yeah. What they were used to. <laughs> We don't, we don't ever do them, and we probably will never do one. Yeah. It They're is. Very oh no, I'm jumping ahead of myself. It's only three fifty nine. <laughs> about to cut us off early. Yeah, I was about to cut you off early. Y'all got thirty seconds. What do you have? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm gonna quit recording well, in a second. 